Right, time to look, take a look through the morning papers with the former detective, Mark Williams Thomas. Uh, Mark, morning to you, morning. And, and obviously yesterday's uh, verdict mm. in Ipswich dominating a lot of the papers. Absolutely, I mean most of the papers are, are focused around him. A number of issues coming out of it. Uh, the Times in particular have focused on the strangler conviction triggers DNA. We must remember that DNA was crucial to this investigation. Uh, they worked on it tirelessly, the Forensic Science Service, um, and they put a, a huge commitment to this. And as a result of that, um, he, that's why he's been convicted um, of the murders. Did you see yesterday there was, there was a a fiber mm. from the carpet on the footwell of his car that was found in one of the victim's hair. I mean, it gives you an indication of how precise the science is. Absolutely, and I think the key element of his course, so his argument was that he had sex with the girls because they were prostitutes, and of course that would explain why some of his DNA was on them. That's far harder to explain why the fibre from the boot of his vehicle appeared on her, and of course that's crucial and damning evidence, and the jury took that on board, and as a result obviously came back with a guilty verdict. But it is interesting when they start talking about, you know, should the DNA database contain more people? It currently has four million people on it, but should everybody be on the DNA database? And after all, uh, I mean, the police got to the position of charging him because his DNA they already had. So very crucial. And if you start looking through some of the other paper aspects that are linked to it, we've certainly got the uh, Susie Lamplew, which becomes yeah, a... Yeah, that, that, I hadn't heard that until mm. this morning. That, that, a lot of the papers looking at that. Well, yeah, Susie Lamplew, I mean, it, just, uh, she was obviously uh, met at what she believed was be a prospective uh, buyer for a house, um, someone called Mr. Kipper. Mm -hmm. um, and f many, many people have come into this frame as far as the inquiry goes and the police have looked at it. Um, the just link just to explain him, that photograph then in, on the front page of the mail. Well the link is is that he was a steward on the QE2 um, at a period of time when she was on the QE2 as well so that's the link between, between them two and I think what we've got to be very careful of is sometimes circumstantial evidence and links and, and occurrences sometimes make people think well actually there's more to it than there is. Well they're saying though that she maintain contact with him mm. uh, even after they, they, they weren't serving on the, on the, the yeah, ladder anymore. Uh, there's, certainly, there's certainly suggestion that there was contact, that he had spoken to her and that that continued. Um, I think the interesting element when you look at him is given how long that, that happened, I would be very surprised if of course he was involved in her murder, that there aren't many other murders that he's committed prior to the prostitutes. And of course that's something that's been raised and it's something that the police now are looking into um, and their suggestion in certainly a number of other papers that he may well be linked to or certainly uh, investigated in relation to another six offences. Let's do a few more stories then. Let's look at the front page of The Sun today, uh, which uh, surprisingly isn't going uh, with the Ipswich story. It's going with foreign prisoners. Yeah, I mean, foreign prisoners is an interesting element and I think particularly if you start looking at the um, the questions that came out of court yesterday, just going back to right quickly, because they were saying, you know, should we have the death penalty? Mm -hmm. We go to the prison service, and we've now got the prison service who has got nearly 81,000 prisoners in, and they're just completely overcrowded. So you've got a problem whereby if you are going to make life sentences uh, applicable and you're going to keep people in prison for longer, then you're going to need to free up some space somehow. Sure. I and should apologise. This isn't on the front page. This is an inside story, is it? Yeah. Then this comes in. This comes in, inside, and then basically what they're saying is foreigners are being allowed to be released nine months early to relieve overcrowding. Just as a former detective, you know, how do you think your colleagues feel, your serving colleagues feel, when they read there's nowhere to, to put people in prison anymore? Well, it, it, it's a farce, it's ridiculous. You know, we should be building more prisons, but the problem is, is that should have happened 10, 15 years ago, not now. They should have foreseen this problem, you know, they should have started to build prisons to be able to accommodate that. Okay, uh, Times you want to go with next, uh, and the, the continuing drama of the Diana inquest. Yeah, the Diana inquest, I mean, we've seen some quite interesting uh, developments on that this week. Certainly it's been extraordinary, with, uh, the whole thing, hasn't it? With um, uh, Fayad going in there and, and obviously making some very, very sweeping claims. Um, and off the back of that, uh, we obviously saw the former head of MI6 going in there um, to, to put it very like clearly in relation to what he felt about some allegations that have been made. Uh, he's called for and has have, has have a number of the other MPs that this trial should stop. Um, the coroner has very clearly come out and said that this must stop. There must be, there, we must stop asking for this uh, case to be closed. There must be, the jury must be allowed to continue to hear all the evidence that's there. 